Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I have a video to edit and I'm gonna show you guys how I edit my routine. I found a ton of tricks that help me enhance my editing. I edit with iMovie, which I feel like is fine. I feel like I can edit videos almost to what I want them to be. If you wanna learn how to edit on iMovie and learn some tricks with that, so let's do it. A little quick disclaimer my first videos are so bad so if the first few videos are not where you'd like them to be you keep editing you'll get there and you'll find your own style too for me i break my editing down into eight stages that's a lot the first stage of editing is the rough cutting and i feel like everybody starts with the rough cutting during the rough cut stage i have three things that i have to do one cut out any breaths cut out any stalling and do my zoom ins or zoom out. So for cutting, which is pretty much breaking a clip, this way you can delete parts of a clip, you can zoom in on specific parts of a clip, it's like the most basic like necessity you need for editing. You go to the clip that you want to cut and I'm literally going to cut it anywhere. Let's cut it here. And then I'm going to press command B and it breaks the clip. So there's a cut in between. I can move this clip anywhere I want to. I can cut the clip even more and delete parts of the clip. That's how I cut out my breaths and that's also how I cut if I'm literally just sitting here like this. For the zoom in and out, I use pretty much three types of zoom ins and outs. I use um, the stationary zoom in, I use the Ken Burns, and I use the Ken Burns which ends in a stop. They're pretty easy to figure out how to use, I'll show you guys obviously on there. The one that's like Ken Burns to a stop, that one took me a while to figure out, but I'll share it with you guys anyway. By the way, I'm editing a vacation outfit ideas video, it should be up before this if you want to go watch this video on how I edit it and then go watch that so you can see what I'm talking about. For the stationary zoom in, I'm just going to do command B, break the clip where I want it to zoom in. And I'm going to press down on the clip that I want. See if I press on this big one, that whole thing turns yellow. If I press on this one, that turns yellow. Then I go up to this little box. So I press that and then you see fit, crop to fill, and can burn. For the stationary one, press crop to fill and then you can, in one of the corners, move the box inward. I usually follow this yellow middle mark and just move mine up and down along that and I would probably keep it there. So let's see how that looks. Just like that. So it's stationary, it stays there for that selected clip. Now for Ken Burns, again, you go up to the little crop sign and instead of pressing crop to fill, you press Ken Burn. And you can select where to start it and where to end it. And I usually do starting where the box is the full screen. And then I end it with a smaller box kind of closer up to my face and we can see what that looks like. See, it zooms up on my face, but if I also wanted to make the ending box smaller, I can also do that by just pressing it on the corner again and zoom in really close on my face, which looks like this. There you go, that's Ken Burns. You can also go back to that crop signal and press this little two arrows thing and I can just click that and instead of zooming inward, it's gonna zoom out so we can see what that looks like too. There you go. Now for the harder one. How I do this, oh gosh. So this is the Ken Burns to a stop. So I'm gonna hit back on fit. So I'm gonna press the selected area again, go up to the crop sign, and I'm just going to press crop to fill. And I want the box where I want it to stop at the very end. So I'm gonna put the box over my face where I want it to stop. So I'm gonna put it there and I'm gonna press enter. Then I'm gonna go over my selected area, this little box that I have right there. And I'm going to press command B where I would want it, the Ken Burns to stop moving and just focus on my face. So now we have two boxes that are just cropped and I just broke them apart. I'm gonna go to the first one, go back up to this cropped box, press Ken Burns. It says that it's going to start zoomed in and then zoom out which I don't want. So I'm gonna press the arrow. This is a little bit harder than the other ones. You can put the start box anywhere you want to, but I'm going to make sure it's over the full screen. And then this is what we have. 
So you can see it did the conburns and then it stopped on my face. That's pretty much stage one. I used command B to cut my clips, delete my breaths, delete my stalling moments, and then I do zoom ins and zoom outs. And I do that for all of the clips. For this video, I have 30 minutes of footage, like 28 minutes. So probably to rough cut, it's gonna take me like an hour. <laughs> so this video, I'm guessing is gonna be around seven or eight minutes when I finish rough cutting it. We'll see. I'll see you guys when I'm ready for stage two. Ooh, I moved to my bed because my back was hurting. The video time now is seven minutes and 29 seconds. So I cut it down hmm, 20 minutes and 30 seconds. I usually cut down my videos at least two thirds. Most of the time, like three quarters, I'd say. Next stage is adding words and personally i'm not a huge fan of the imovie words i feel like they aren't super professional looking and you can't really change the way the words move and stuff so i'm not a big fan i actually found out this trick from your mom ashley pretty much if you have google drive i'm sure there's some other document you can use if you don't have google drive to like double click and this little box will come up that says new folder click the more at the bottom and this other tab will come up and you're gonna click google drawings and it will bring you to a page that looks like this pretty much what you do once you get there press insert text box then once you've done that you just press down once and a text box will appear i don't use arial i use a font called laura a b c d okay found it type whatever in there i personally always have my letters and text boxes in white i'm gonna say file download the png and your imovie wait give me a sec do not auto fit wait do not Oh my gosh, sorry guys, don't. <laughs> the first little paint box, this one, don't press that, make that transparent. I was like, what's going on? I don't know why it's... And then you can go to text color, I'm gonna make my text color white. Then you go to file, download, PNG, put it in. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm sorry I'm making so many mistakes right now. Final answer, final answer. Don't have an outline, make it transparent. <laughs> sorry guys. There. So when you finally make that text box that has a transparent background, no outline of the text box and just the words that are a color, you can put that into iMovie like I showed. Once it's into iMovie, I usually always have words that just show up on screen and then disappear. But that's not the default way to do a PNG file. What you have to do, go up to this little crop button, press fit and fit means it won't like zoom in and out on the word then we're gonna go to this guy and press there's cutaway green screen and sp split screen and picture and picture and i always do picture and picture and that will pretty much just allow you to have a box that you can make as big as you want and also make sure the box won't move on the video clip then this is important you want to make sure go over the png that you put on top and press these little blue things backward. Well, it says zero, 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 zero. That's what it looks like. And there you have it. If you want it to be the second method of words where it slowly comes in and then slowly comes out, you just move the blue line towards the middle. You don't have to be touching for the effect. I'll show you when they're touching. You see how it like appears and then it disappears instead of just like sharply going in and out. That's the second way. I literally never do that. It gives me iMovie text box vibe. Third way, I do do this sometimes. It's where the words are sharply like entering and exiting, but they like zoom towards you. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. This crop box again. Press Ken Burns. It's pretty much a Ken Burns, but with words. Goes towards the words more. You make the inbox really small over the words. Press enter. And this is what it will do. It just zooms in on the words pretty much. So I'm gonna go ahead and add text to all of the spots that I wanna add text to. It's usually when I say where a piece of clothing's from, like I'm like, this is from Target and Target word will appear right here. Pretty much add text wherever I want to. It doesn't really matter. You do you, whatever you wanna do with your video. This usually takes me 30 minutes, probably underestimating it again.
My computer is dying. I did all of the words. And the next step is adding screenshots, adding videos on top of the clips like this. I don't know what picture I'm about to show, but <laughs> there you go. I drag a picture in and I can just put it over the video where I can make my voice actually a voiceover from this video and put a picture on top of a different background. So I'm gonna show you how to do both of those things right now. I'm gonna use one of my thumbnails that just happened to be on my desktop right now as the screenshot I'm gonna use. It doesn't have to be a screenshot, obviously. It can be any type of picture. I take the screenshot in and I just lay it over like that. And as you can see, the screenshot zooms in. And that's because if we go to our little crop symbol, it says Ken Burns. Ken Burns pretty much just means zoom in or zoom out. Gradually, we're gonna press fit. Fit is your best friend. Then we go back to this video overlay settings and go to picture and picture take one of the corners drag it out you can make it any size you want it to be and i always make sure it's in the middle which is when all of the yellow lines show up so if we watch it now hello everybody it gradually comes in because we haven't moved the blue dots back so that's what it looks like now i'm moving behind the picture but the picture's still on top of me but if i wanted to have the background not be me talking and moving then i can put another background in this is a little bit more complicated but i think it's worth it i'm gonna take this black screenshot that i just brought in going to make sure it's the same length as the picture that you're putting on top we move this on top of the black screenshot we do our command b shortcut and delete the excess i take the parts of me speaking and i just drag them underneath the screenshot and then my voice becomes a voice memo just like this hello everybody i'm a little rough right now pretty much i just made myself a voiceover and put main picture on top of a black screenshot so it can be a little nicer not as messy looking and that's how you add pictures just make sure that the blue dots are moved all the way to the side so it doesn't like gradually come in and out and make sure that it's on fit and not can burns and that's all you need to do to add pictures you can do this with pictures or videos stage four as you can tell editing takes a really long time <laughs> the difference between me starting and me now is crazy pretty much at this point in the editing process the video is almost complete now we're at the finishing touches stages and there are a lot of them but we're there four is adding the intro and the outro and i'm not gonna really show you how i make my intros and outros i can walk you through what i do really quickly though i type out my name with a cute background take screenshots of it move it into i movie find cute green screens or non-copyrighted transitions on youtube and then overlay those on top of my screenshots that i took and then edit it as that sound effects all that stuff it takes a while but i think they're fun to make for adding my outro, that's super easy. I literally just add it to the end of my video, whatever that is. So to the very end of the video, I have it saved as its own little file so it won't get lost anywhere. Usually after I finished introducing the video, I add in the intro. The intro is also saved as its own file so it's really easy to just put in. And that's what stage four is. Fast and easy. Stage three literally took me two hours guys i'm not even kidding i don't know why it took me so long i'm gonna go ahead and do stage five which is music and for music i use binsound.com and download music there and i also use audio youtube library i'm gonna take you to both of those websites right now this is binsound and a lot of the music at the top is free to download but once you go to like a section you can see that there's some that say purchase and these do cost money but the ones that are free to download just say download even though the music is free to use you have to put it in your description box that it's from bin sound which is why i do that for every single video i also use youtube audio library get to through the youtube studio app i'm pretty sure and they have a ton of songs that i actually need to listen to because because they just added brand new ones. <laughs> My favorite person that uploads music on here. I love Sheil. His music is very good off Shane's songs too. So how to put in music is super easy. You literally just drag it in. To change the volume of the music, so I'm going to... I just add in my intro music by dragging it in. And then you see this bar 
right here you just literally adjust the sound however you want to you can bring it up to 400 percent or one percent right now we're on stage six and from here on even from stage five and on it's, it's pretty easy stage six is adding sound effects and pretty much how i get sound effects is i look up non-copyrighted sound effects and i'll press one okay so say i wanted to do that one. sure there's some other way to download the sounds but the, the way that always works is go and look up quicktime player file new audio recording and, and you literally just press this little red button that will start recording find the little red button again which is hard and then you just press that press the x name it something on your imovie you can just drag them in it's gonna come up as a sound cut it when you want to and then boom that's it guys that's how i add my sound effects i kind of add them wherever i feel fit i do the mouse click one a lot that's it <laughs> stage seven is watching over the video for the first time cutting out parts you forgot to cut out adding more words making sure there's like a smooth transition between different scenes and different clips and seeing if you stay interested i looked over the video and it's completely done so it's time to move on to stage eight which is exporting i have a specific way to export that i haven't always been doing pretty much what i do is i go to this little export share sign at the top i press export file and then i make sure it's at 1080p custom and then i don't press best because best is insane eight gigabytes per video i don't have space for that i press custom and make sure you move this little custom bar all the way over to the top because i feel like the quality is still good at this point and then say compress better quality not faster and then press next and then this little circle will come up here and that will tell you how much progress the video has made in exporting so i also wanted to say that everybody's first video is pretty bad when you look back on it i think the only way to like make progress in editing is to just do it over and over and over again and you'll find your own trick your own style of editing will like appear one day and you'll get faster and faster at it if anyone has any extra questions about editing or if you want me to make a thumbnail video or a want to make an intro or outro video comment below i'll see you guys next time i upload either wednesday or saturday i don't know what's wrong with my boy bye guys